Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Fartuk-101. The previous episode featured a plan to search Fort Myers and find the murder suspect. Felina, the female leader of the Centaur, agreed to allow her son to come in under heavy escort to attempt to identify her husband's murderer. As the group formed up around the strangers, Karina the Waif made friends with the future leader of the tribe. When she pulled Peepers the Axebeak from the stables, the Waif was surprised to discover that the young Fargus could communicate with her mount. As she stayed behind with the juvenile male, the rest of the group moved forward and the guards began to rouse people into the streets for a makeshift lineup. The guards discovered Sir Maggart in the inn where Hagrid had been slain and a battle with the guards ensued. As the Grey Cloak attempted to escape, he jumped from the roof, fracturing his leg. The heroes closed in on the position as he recognized Cabe. Pulling forth a hand crossbow, the rogue knight fired off a bolt. The bard managed to dodge the missile weapon and punched the man squarely in the face as investigator Rockfist impaled the man with her blade as she jumped from the rooftop above. With the man down, Peeper squawked in agony and Cabe observed a casualty. We rejoined the party in the middle of the streets in Fort Myers. Silence reigned over the community with the only the soft squawking of Peeper's the axe beak breaking it. Cabe had fallen to his knees after seeing the aftermath of the battle. Tears streamed down his face as he took in the horrific scene. He punched the dirt and screamed and sobbed. He slowly rose to his feet and trudged back to where everyone had gathered around the casualty. Wiping away his tears, his chest was filled with rage and pain as to what he saw. Reliving the last few moments, he remembered dodging the hand crossbow bolt that was meant for him. He remembered it whizzing past his face as his hatred for the rogue knight consumed him. Those thoughts of anger broke apart, just like his heart, as he reached a circle of onlookers. A low moan exited the feathered axe beak who lay in the street. Fargus and Sister Elaine moved to intercept the bard who pushed his way past them. They let him pass as tears fell from their eyes and Bulger openly sobbed in sorrow. Lady Irena put her hand on his shoulder and he brushed it away quickly. Looking down, he knelt in the street next to the large bird. Patting the creature did little to console it and Cabe pushed it to one side. Kneeling across from the bard was the young male centaur. He held Karina's head gently in his lap and looked sadly at the half-elf. The young creature attempted to speak, but no words came out. Cabe reached across the waif's body and pulled out the bolt that had just struck her in the face, killing her instantly. Fatigue and sorrow set in as he stared at the instrument of her death and tried to cry out, but couldn't. The bloody bolt fell from his hand and he closed his eyes, allowing tears to flow freely. A pall fell over the street as the guards and citizens closed in around the group. The heroes shed tears and sobbed as the city watch began to move people back from the scene. Investigator Rockfist slowly approached as her mother ran up to check on her daughter. A shadow passed over the death scene and a large golden eagle screeched before flying off. Sister Elaine fumbled and put away the wand of healing that was useless in this case back into her belt. After several minutes, the young centaur openly wept that the bolt that was coming to him was stopped by the young Karina. He pointed out that she had jumped from the axe beak and taken the hit instead of him. His admission did little to heal the gaping wound caused at the cost of the fight. Three days passed and Fort Myers had returned to normal. Business was booming and travelers had been arriving and departing as the season grew late. 
the centaurs left town and had been granted permission to take Peepers and Metallica the Unicorn with them. The party, as well as the watch commander, felt that those two creatures would fare better with the horsemen than in a human urban environment. The party had also discovered that Meebles had been one of the casualties that he had attempted to fight off the guards to aid the escape of the Grey Cloak. Investigator Rockfist and Mama came by to check on the group frequently and found Sister Elaine, Lady Irena, and Fargus in a tavern across from their inn. Joining them at the table, they discovered that the trio was coping with the loss better than Cabe. The bard had not exited his room since the murder and was apparently quite morose. After making small talk, the dwarven detective asked the party if they had made plans for the future. The threesome admitted that they had not really planned that far ahead and were still trying to deal with the loss. Mama Rockfist attempted to console them, but admitted that dwarves weren't very touchy-feely like humans and elves were. She pointed out that they and the centaurs had given the young woman a great send-off to the next world, but received only blank stares. She clumsily excused herself and then left the table. My apologies, my mom. Well, we dwarves don't. Well, we don't usually deal well, but it was waved off by Lady Irena. She pointed out that no apologies were necessary and they understood. They were just attempting to process the loss of their own. The door opened and a very grisly looking half-elf entered. The room went silent as a blank staring cave silver tongue entered the building. He joined his associates at the table, but none of them could speak. The dark circles under his eyes and the patchy beard that no elf could grow spoke volumes. You look like shit, said the ranger. Cabe stared at the large human blankly and pursed his lips. His retort was made up of two words. I'm done. The other four members of the table looked at him and then at each other but could not determine what he meant. Cabe looked each one of them in the eye and spun an empty mug on the table, shaking his head and conversing with himself. I'm done. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just done. I'm done with this. I'm tired of running. I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm going to I'm going to Phoenix. I'm going to find these gangsters. I'm going to make them pay. I'm going to kill them all. Midway through his recitation, Bulger came in and stood behind the seated bard. Listening to the forlorn half elf, the former sailor nodded in agreement. Aye, they all need to pay for this. For all of this. I'm not gonna keep running either. I don't care if we have to go to Most Cry and deal with the head of the syndicate. They're all going to pay for what happened to the waif. I say we go there, we kill them all, and we let Dilo sort them out. The two males revealed only solemn expression on their faces, pointing out their concern. Fargus, Sister Lane, and Lady Irena all looked at each other, then to Rockfist. I guess we're going home. The dwarf looked sad, but shook her head in agreement. I think you probably need to. Your situation is not going to change until you deal with this problem. You can't keep running. They will pick you off one by one if needed. I will let the stable know that you are leaving and to prepare your mounts. Is there anything else I can do for you? The group looked at each other, but Cabe was still clearly in a daze. Fargus thanked her and pointed out that they would leave in the morning when Bolger asked a question. Missy, how close are we to the coast? The reply came quickly. Why, one day's ride to Katorian Bay. The gnome laughed loudly. Katorian Bay? Those at the table watched as Bolger found the answer particularly amusing. Even Cabe took turn to look at the lunacy taking place. Finally, Bolger caught his breath and waved off the strange looks. My friends, I think I have a way back to Phoenix that will be a whole lot easier. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.